Hello there everyone, this is The Wayback Tech and I'm going to be doing another face-off video. This time I'm going to be pitting some 486SX class processors up against each other to see which one comes out on top. We've got offerings from Intel, AMD, Cyrix, and UMC. So this should be rather interesting to see which one of these guys comes out ahead. The 486 platform was around for quite some time, being sold for nearly a decade and spanning many emerging interface and memory standards during its reign. Intel continued to produce the 486 processor for various embedded systems until 2007, making the 486 core itself nearly 20 years old since its release in 1989. These are the SX class processors that I currently own that will be used for this test. Intel's 46 SX33 offering, which will be slightly overclocked to 40 MHz. UMC's U5S Super 40. And if you never heard of UMC or seen any of those 46 chips, don't feel too bad. They, they weren't available for sale in the US and it makes them somewhat rare to find. Cyrix's first 168 pin 46 chip the CX46S and an AMD 46SX250 which in itself the SX AMD chips are kind of hard to find as well. In the early years of the 46 the SX was the more cost-effective solution for the 46 platform because they were cheaper due to the lack of a functional floating point unit and typically this was simply defective DX class chips that had their FPU unit disabled. Others in the 46 era simply were never manufactured with an FPU at all. Although later as the 46 processor aged the DX chips became cheaper and far more common to be installed in any machine and you really don't see too many systems with SX class 46 processors by the time the DX266 was commonly for sale. During the early years of the 46, budget friendly systems, also known as cheap computers, typically came with a 386 or slower processor, but all that changed by 1994 thereabouts when the Pentium 60 was released and Intel started slashing prices on the 46 chips along with the other CPU manufacturers as well. Just like the DX family of 46 chips, the SX also came in various speeds, including clock doubling variants. They had their own overdrive versions and low power consumption versions as well. Both the Cyrix and AMD SX class chips are somewhat rare. The UMC chips are more readily available in other countries, but they're not so readily available in the US for the obvious reason because they weren't allowed to be sold here. The Cyrix 46S40 processor is nothing more than a 46 DLC chip on a 46 168-pin package. Although programs seem to recognize this chip as an SLC chip, this chip has two kilobytes of level one cache, which all the processors in this test are running with eight kilobytes. Something new that Cyrix introduced into this chip that was maybe more of a gimmick than anything, but I guess it kind of holds a little bit of a performance boost. Uh, something called burst cache, or as Cyrix called it, fast cache. This is probably the closest processor to testing an actual 46 DLC chip on a VLB board with a VLB video card. The Cyrix chip is also very picky about which motherboard it will run correctly in when level 2 cache is enabled. And so far the only board I have been able to come up with that will correctly support this processor is this board which is running a SIS 491 chipset. Other boards that I have do not function correctly with the Cyrix's caching model and they also run extremely slow, scoring 386 levels of performance. The early 46 processors from Cyrix used a unique way of handling the cache and a lot of boards, or more accurately chipsets probably, did not support this correctly. This is an issue Cyrix fixed in later revisions of their 46 processors. Although the AMD is running at 50 MHz, it is also having to cope with a small 25 MHz system bus, which also affects the memory speed as well as the throughput on the VLB bus. The overall performance of this chip should be about the same as the 40 MHz counterparts in this test. For this test, 16 MB of fast page memory is installed, 72 pin, and I'm also going to be running an STB Lightspeed 2 MB VLB card sporting the T-Seng ET4000 W32P, and this is the fastest VLB card that I have, though it would be kind of fun to pit this up against a PowerVR9100 based VLB card and see how it can keep up with that. 
First we'll have a look at an old favorite of mine, Config. And I do like hardware info as well. This is a program I've used for many, many, many years now. It's a nice little hardware info program. It is interesting to note that for some reason, and this is just an example of this program's quirkiness, but that this uh, program detects 512K of level 2 cache on this motherboard when the AMD SX chip is installed. Nevertheless, we can see the actual clock speeds of the chips here, as well as the current configuration of this system. Top bench scores show that all the processors score nearly identical within a few points of each other, except for the UMC chip, which is scoring about 90 points higher, yeah, give or take, and shows that the UMC chip is, has clearly had some significant performance tweaks that were done to it over the original Intel design, which, which this chip is said to have been copied from, probably without a licensing agreement with Intel, and this is why the chip was not for sale in the US. Superscape benchmark shows some of the same results here, but it can be seen that the Cyrix chip is falling behind by a few frames per second here, probably due to it only having two kilobytes of level one cache. The UMC chip is clearly running away from the rest of the pack here by quite a healthy lead. The same can be seen again with the PCP bench, though the Cyrix chip simply just locked up the system unfortunately, so we can't really see how that would have performed. But once again we can see the UMC chip is ahead of the pack by a couple frames per second at least. And keep in mind this is a 46 platform, so you know any performance increases are going to yield only a few frames per second increase, but still you can see that the UMC chip is clearly the dominant process are here in this test as well. Doom is where things get interesting. I won't bore you with the whole run of Doom because it's pretty slow, especially on the Cyrix chip, so I'll just skip to the end here. Once again, we can see the UMC chip is outperforming everything else. While the AMD is a little bit faster than the Intel, probably due to the 10 megahertz increase in clock speed it has over the Intel processor, the Cyrix chip is performing abysmal in Doom. Well, quite pathetic if you ask me. Again, probably due to it having a quarter of the amount of level one cache that the rest of the processors have in this test. And finally to wrap this face off up, some descent gameplay. You can see the sluggish performance that the Cyrix and the Intel chips are delivering. The AMD chip is a bit faster, but the UMC chip is clearly performing better with descent. The best description I can give is the keyboard controls are much more responsive with the UMC chip than with the others. There is obviously a bit of a frame per second boost with the UMC chip, but the responsiveness is really impressive to me for a 46 processor running at 40 megahertz. Well, this was quite an interesting little test just to see how the 46 processors uh, got along with each other there. The SX class, anyway. I plan on doing one with the DX and probably the 586 as well. I might throw the DX4100 chips in there with the 586 chips since that's basically what the 586 chips are. <clears throat> you can see that the Cyrix processor is not doing too bad. It's a little bit behind everybody else, but it is an early processor for Cyrix, well, their earliest actually, being that it's based on a 46 DLC, so it's not doing too bad with only having two kilobytes of level one cache. It's it's not doing too bad. Problem is, is the processor's quirky with the motherboard, so it's, it's one of those processors I really wouldn't recommend having, unless you've got a chipset that actually sp specifically supports it. 
And I do have a UMC8886 board, not a PC chips board, not the one I'm talking about anyway, that does technically, supposedly, supposed to support it, at least according to the manual, but it doesn't. So, I've got one more test here to do. We've taken a look at the UMC Super 40. So, let's go ahead and have a look at the UMC Super 33 and pit it against the 40, and we'll just see... Um, We'll see what kind of a performance increase that 7 megahertz uh, actually gave. In top bench, you can see that the UMC processor at 33 megahertz is scoring 217, 218. It kind of fluctuates there. One of the things I don't like about top bench is it's jumping back and forth crap. Same can be seen in 3D bench here. You can see that the 40 megahertz processor, there is actually an improvement with just 7 megahertz. Fairly significant one, too. In PCP bench, you can see that the 40 megahertz chip is outpacing the 33 megahertz, but only by about a frame per second, so not a big deal, but this is a pretty intensive program, I think. So a little bit of clock speed is not going to really make a whole lot of difference with this. In Doom is where things get interesting again. The 33 megahertz processor is scoring more like the Intel at 40 megahertz did. You can see that there's definitely a bit of an improvement with Doom. It's certainly measurable, at least. And to round it off, let's go ahead and do Descent here again. And I only do these this particular round of benchmarks just to keep them all consistent with the Socket 7 face-off that I did. So you can all go back and look at those benchmarks and compare a 46 to a Pentium if you want to, or at least the MMX class. You can see there's not really a whole lot of difference in descent between the 33 megahertz and the 40 megahertz version. My initial assessment of the UMC chips is that the 33 megahertz offering at least is more comparable to a DX266, at least as far as the Intel uh, version is concerned. So as you can see, the UMC U5S Super 33 didn't do too bad. And it's still faster than the 40 megahertz offerings that the other guys uh, put out back then. Well, the Intel chip is a 33, but we're overclocking it to 40. Anyway, it doesn't matter. You can see that even though it's only a 7 megahertz increase between the 33 and the 40, there is actually a pretty decent amount of performance increase just from that small amount of clock speed. You might be wondering, what does this chip run like at 50 megahertz? What kind of performance does it give you at 50 megahertz? Or maybe even 60 megahertz. <clears throat> well, I didn't quite man manage to get it up to 60, but I did run it at 50, but I'll save that for another video. So, anyway, this is the Wayback Tech. Thank you very much for watching. Peace out, everyone.